Hey everyone, real quick before we get to the hunt here, just wanted to let you know that we're doing a giveaway for this episode. Our friends at Tethered are gonna be giving away a saddle kit that includes a saddle, ropes, and platform. So if you ever thought about getting into saddle hunting, this may be your chance to, uh, to get started with the saddle kit from Tethered. To enter into the giveaway, all you have to do is like and comment this video, or you can go over to thehuntingpublic.com and buy merchandise there. That will also get you entered into the giveaway. This video is coming out on Tuesday, November 23rd, and the cutoff date for the giveaway is Friday, November 26th. So we've got a bunch of new clothing on the website. Uh, you can go check that out. Mindy and Hayden are just cranking out orders as fast as they can. We've got more deals coming on Thursday and Black Friday. We've got, got all kinds of good stuff coming up for you. So we got you up to speed. Appreciate you guys watching, following along, all the support, and we hope you have a happy Thanksgiving. Well, the rut is on here in South Dakota. Big old muley buck, bumping does, lip curling. Not a care in the world. It's on. Well, I'm just about to the Black Hills here, and this is the second annual trip, hunting up here with my, my dad and my cousin. My brother was here last year, but he couldn't make it this year. And I was actually up here in September. Had a few days to hunt, check some trail cameras for my dad and my cousin, and got out on the same property that I got permission on last year. Got on some bucks, but overall saw way less deer than I did the previous year. But South Dakota had been experiencing or has been experiencing a really bad drought. So along with that, there's been a certain amount of, of EHD that has killed off in some areas a high number of deer. And although I didn't find many dead deer myself here back in September, it did seem like deer numbers were quite a bit lower. So I'm curious now coming back in the rut to see if you know, the, the deer sightings are still significantly lower than what you know, they were compared to last year. But regardless of that, I'm excited to be here hunting with my dad and my cousin again. The weather's looking good. Timing of the rut is perfect. Gonna be here from about the 8th through the 12th. And one other advantage I have now is the experience of hunting this property, not only last November, but now in September. And I've been able to dial in a few places on this property where the deer move through consistently. So not only that, but just with the timing of the rut, calling is effective, decoying is effective, the only thing I really have to contend with is a bunch of editing to do on the remainder of the Public Land Challenge episodes. They're just, they're really intensive episodes to edit. So that will cut into my hunting time a little bit. But like I said, with my previous experience on this property, hopefully can get a, a good opportunity at a buck in short order here, and then spend more time actually hunting in the stand with my dad and my cousin. Well, it's my first evening in South Dakota here. I'm gonna have to keep the volume down a little bit because it's quiet. And if a deer are coming, I, I'm not gonna see him until they get pretty close to me. But anyways, came out for a quick hunt this evening. It's been a good part of the day of editing, working on the public land challenge hunt still. It was too nice of an evening not to get out for a little bit here. And I just came to about the easiest spot that I could get to. There's a big alfalfa field on this property down below me here hoping to catch deer coming out of this uh, this big drainage here. You know, coming across this little open area and then just working their way down. I have no idea what to expect. I've never, I don't, haven't set foot on this part of the property before. Like I said, just the quickest thing that I could get to. mature buck. I actually think that's the buck I missed last year. I'm 
when he was looking at me, I wasn't quite convinced, but when he turned and I got a, a profile of him, the truck is loud as he could tell, it's just dead calm. He was paralleling the fence on the other side about 65, 70 yards away, he's cutting trails that lead down off this hill, down into the alfalfa field below, trying to pick up a, a doe scent. Just before he got out of sight, I decided to grunt, just tried to cast it down behind me, but I knew it was a pretty low, low odds of it actually working. I mean, the deer is 60, 70 yards away, and it's wide open in front of me here. Like, there's just kind of a rookie mistake, honestly. I'd have been better off letting him get down into the timber you know, pretty much just out of sight and then calling to where he couldn't see where I was calling from. But anyways, it's fun to see a mature buck like that. And like I said, I'm pretty sure that's the same one that I missed last year and found his shed in September. You know, if that is the same deer, his rack is maybe a little bit bigger, but his body is definitely bigger. Good to know that he's still around. All right, it's November the 9th. I'm excited about this hunt this morning and then get back into that same valley that I was hunting back in September where I saw those bucks feeding on that snowberry. But yesterday I went in midday when the wind picked up and uh, trimmed out some branches in a tree on the opposite side of the valley from where I'd been hunting back in September. I'm gonna take the decoy in with me this morning. Perfect opportunity to use it looking out over that whole wide valley. Had some good hunts there last year, had some good hunts in there this September. Hopefully that's going to continue. Seeing how this all sets up really makes me wish that I would have had the opportunity to hunt this tree back in September. There's this patch of snowberry right here. It's where all those deer were feeding every morning, the three mornings that I hunted here. I was hunting back by the pond and all those deer were browsing right here and the, the very edge of it is about 30 yards away. So, you know, they spent two hours within range of this tree right here. But the three days that I got to hunt here, all I had was north winds. If I would have had a southerly wind, I mean, this would have worked perfectly. So this would have been the killing tree back in September for sure. Hopefully it will be now in November. My day winds are starting to kick in a little bit. Coming from the southwest, which is good. It's what I needed because earlier thermals were just pulling my scent right down to the decoy. But now that the wind is getting good, I'm going to do a calling sequence.
was a good buck right there. I would just done that sequence. I was about to pick up the antlers and I heard a crack up in the timber on the other side and the buck drops down and starts crossing the dam. He's standing there on the dam looking. He stands there for a little bit and then just trots off. I guess the wind for whatever reason. It was, it was coming steady out of the southwest. That's why I decided to do a calling sequence. And now it switched and I just feel it on the back of my neck. The scent is just blowing right back down that way. You know, it's cool to see him, though, standing on that dam with the steam from his breath. Well, it's about 10 o'clock, and that was going to be my cutoff time to get the next episode done and uploaded. I don't know if I'll be able to make it out for an evening hunt tonight or not, but a surprisingly slow morning for this spot. This was the one place that I was seeing deer on this property this September. It was not even really close to the numbers of deer that I was seeing last November for whatever reason. You know, if, if they really got smacked by EHD, which there has been some, so I'm wondering if there's been just a lot of hunting pressure on this property. I know the, the landowners are pretty generous and let, let a lot of people hunt here, including myself, which I've, I've really appreciated. But I know there's you know a lot of other guys that, that hunt here, but typically it seems like most of them are hunting on the, uh, the alfalfa field on this property. In fact, uh, the landowner texted me and asked that uh, on Wednesday and Thursday, that I not hunt in the afternoons here because he's got somebody else coming in to hunt. So I'm guessing it's some combination of the, you know, the effects of the drought, possible deer die off, and hunting pressure. So far in a day and a half, I've seen a total of three deer, but two of them have been shooter bucks. So I think my plan is to, uh, to dive deeper into the property. And it looks like it'd be a, a really good spot that would hold deer. It's a little bit more remote a little more rugged, it's a pretty steep hill. So that's, uh, that's gonna be my next step, is to get a little bit deeper into the property and, and check out some of the stuff that I really haven't hardly set foot in yet, between last year and this year. been up in the tree for about an hour now and haven't seen any deer yet but I like the looks of this spot but I'm set up here on top of this ridge and this timber L's right here I'm basically set up right in the corner of that got a northwest wind when I got in here this morning I noticed this little rock outcropping here and another one right there and there's a little bit of a lane that comes through between them and that arm of the other timber runs about like that so and that's all thick as you can see it's like higher stem density cover and it is as it runs that way too it's a lot shorter pines thicker pines so good bedding cover all in this direction so my thought is you know buck will cruise the downwind side of this these thicker pines hopefully cruise right through this little gap right here between these rock outcroppings and then just you know bend around this ridge bends around here I've got this open area right here. This is what I saw on the map. Open, adjacent to the thicker cover. It looks like a pretty good trail right there. It comes across the top. And again, the wind is coming like this. So anything that moves across the top here shouldn't be able to win me. It should be within bow range. I want to give this far corner of the property a, a good try. And I'm probably going to sit in here all day long. That's, that's actually one of the questions we get from time to time. You know, is it comfortable to hunt out of a saddle all day long? And the answer is absolutely yes. I did it last year, or at least hunted really close to all day long a couple times last year. And one of the days was when I'd missed that buck in the snow and he bedded down close by me. Now there's a couple things that really help as far as comfort goes. And the back band is, is probably the biggest one, at least for me, just to help give you more support in the middle of your back. And I like the fact that you can you know, you can sit, 
you can lean, I tend to lean most of the time. You know, I can turn around and stand and you know, press against the, the tether and have it hold me in. You can sit sideways, there's just a lot of ways you can you know, shift a little bit to stay comfortable. I'm excited about this spot. I think it'll be worth sitting in here all day, or at least a good part of the day. Well, it's about 8.30 right now. I still haven't seen any deer, but the wind is let up just a little bit. I think I'm gonna do a calling sequence. something back over here making making a rub like a buck rake in his antlers.
but camera says 12 minutes. I rattled maybe 15, 20 minutes ago. And then I started hearing something. I'm sure my hat is, yeah. I thought I could hear footsteps and hear something raking a branch. I could just see him through this thick stuff, making rubs, making a scrape, and then finally worked his way up through here. Coming in like that, you know, I wasn't sure if he was gonna you know, work out about 25 yards and trying to anticipate with the camera. Got it on the opposite side of what I would normally want it. I'd want it on the, the other side of me, but it's just not the way that I'm set up. Heart shot him. He ran 50 yards and is down. Oh, man. I'm a shaking, shivering mess right now. I gotta figure out how I'm gonna get this thing out of here. I'm about three quarters of a mile the way back in, but the good thing is, it's pretty much all downhill from here. You know, I look at the footage on the shot, and when I stopped the buck right here, he was definitely quartering to me. I probably, I could have and, and probably should have let him continue on and get more broadside. You know, I knew that he was in the frame of the camera. I had him stop there. So with that in mind, I aimed tight to the shoulder and it looked like it you know, hit him right in the heart. I just got a little bit anxious, you know, having the buck right there and in frame of the camera. And But I was consciously thinking as I was aiming, you know, because he was slightly quartering too, you know, make sure and aim tight to the shoulder. Otherwise, you're looking at one long liver stomach or something like that. So, hey. Hey, what's up? Got one. <laughs> yeah. Watched him fall, so he's he's down for sure. <laughs> He's just like, I'm done. And they came back to the, they went back to the house and sat there all afternoon editing. Everybody's just so worn out. It's just constant. Yep, it's been a constant grind for sure. Oh, there's another deer. Okay, love you, bye. There's another one. There's got to be a buck somewhere here. Little one. look like four adult does and a fawn and then a, a basket rack eight pointer was following them kind of stopped and looked at the buck laying there and then worked their way on and I'm working their way back up into that thicker cover that I was talking about that higher stem density cover well, that was cool I'm glad I stayed up in the tree and got to see that call my dad and my cousin and then get down and go look at this thing All right, here we go. This is just a really neat spot in here. There's the tree. I think it was either this sapling, or this sapling, actually, I, I think it was this sapling. He rubbed that uh, just before I shot him. So, yep, there's hair right there. I think my arrow would be sticking in the ground somewhere here, but I don't see it offhand. I'll look for it more closely. I wanna go get my hands on this deer. Wide open timber shouldn't take long to find him. Oh, there he is. <laughs> oh man. Look at that. Just what I thought. Like he's just got a compact frame, but he is massive. Five by five with a split. Awesome South Dakota buck right there. 
<sighs> as the entry right there. And like I said, he was slightly quartering too when I stopped him and I knew I needed to you know, tuck it tight to the shoulder. I mean, it's just right on the point, right in the V exit, you know, it was about right there on the other side. I mean, that more than likely got the heart or some arteries because there is a significant blood trail and he only made it 50 yards and was he was starting to fall within just a few seconds. Well, after what's been kind of a long, tough season, it feels a really good feeling to, to be able to call one up, have him come in close like that, and then to get a 12 yard shot and then watch him fall. It makes all the, all the long days and all the grinding worthwhile. After hunting that valley yesterday around that water hole and not seeing many deer, I figured I probably needed to push a little bit farther back into the property and, and get in some, into some new country that you know, potentially hasn't been hunted. There's a lot of hunters in this area and, you know, the landowners have been very generous to let me hunt, but they also let a number of other people hunt. So, you know, I've been coordinating with the landowner and making sure that I'm not overlapping or potentially interfering with anybody else's hunt. You know, that's why I wanted to get back into the, the far end of this property, get into some new country that I'd, I had scouted this back in September. You know, there's a train features back in here that made sense. You know, the thicker pines, you know, it just all, you know, came together you know, back in this back end of the property where I felt like probably nobody else had been hunting, where I'd found some good sign back in September, found some beds, uh, rub, fresh droppings, saw a doe and a fawn, figured there'd probably be deer back in here. Beautiful November 10th morning here in South Dakota. These woods, these pine woods are just gorgeous. So anyways, I am, like I said, beyond excited, beyond pumped up for this. And I know the guys will be too. But the good thing is my dad and my cousin are gonna come meet me and help me get them out of here. I've got about a 400 to 500 yard kind of side hill, downhill drag down to the that valley where that water hole is where we can get the vehicle into. So got a little bit of work to do, but thankful for the opportunity to do it and also thankful for the opportunity to to uh, share this with my dad and my cousin. It's been a long time since we've been on a, a buck recovery together and even though there was you know, no tracking involved, it'll still be fun to have them come up here and, and share the story. licking your tail like it's gonna be clean south dakota problems and this is incredible that's my last evening here in south dakota my dad and my cousin are out hunting tonight i, I filmed my cousin this morning uh, he shot a doe and my dad and my cousin and i hunted uh, during the middle part of the day stalking mule deer and now this afternoon, I'm just kind of getting everything packed up and ready to go and got a little bit of time here to come out for a quick drive this evening. We're gonna go thank the landowner. And it just so happens that there's a pile of deer out here. There's probably 20 deer total that I've seen so far. Six or seven different bucks, a bunch of them are kind of about the same size, nice eight pointers. There's one big buck way in the back that has a doe kind of separated from the rest of the group. And there's some of this big old gray-faced mature buck, like just a big fork antler thing. Bucks are posturing, chasing, running each other around. I mean, it's just incredible, like this flurry of deer activity. What a way to end on a high note here, getting to watch all these deer. I mean, just a blessing to be here. Just a perfect way to end this trip.